Hello guys, this is TJ here, we're back again with another walkthrough, which is Trihackney's Blue Windows Machine. Since this is our OSCP Learning Path Episode 2, this room is available for free users also. So apart from the OSCP Learning Path, you guys can play around with this without the subscription. You can see this, this is my older video, at that time, I did not enroll for OSCP Learning Path. So let's get started. First, let's try to connect the Trihackney VPN that is downloaded from the access page. We can confirm the connection in the access page. And also you can find your virtual IP from MIFConfig. Okay, now let's deploy the machine and wait for the machine IP. We got the IP address. Now let's create the notes. I have already answered to these questions. So, let me show you only the practical way to crack this machine. As usual, the first phase is reconnaissance. We will use the nmap tool to find the open ports and the system details. Here I'm using the default script and version detection tags. We can see some of the ports are opened and the computer name and the operating system details. Now, let's use the Vuln script to find any vulnerability on this machine. While I enumerate the scanned results, I found that this OS have MS17010 vulnerability. With this, we can do the remote code execution on Microsoft SMB version 1 server. Most people call this vulnerability as Eternal Blue. First, I will do the exploitation with Metasploit, like the Try Hack Me suggestion. After that, let's use the public exploit to get the root access. Metasploit is another powerful yet complex tool that has many options and features. We can start the search for MS17010 in MSF console. And we find that there are both auxiliary and exploit modules tailored for this particular vulnerability. The difference between auxiliary and exploit module is auxiliary modules include poor scanners, fuzzers, sniffers, and more. And the exploit modules are defined as the modules that use payloads. So, I will use the Eternal Blue exploit module for now. After that, we can see what are the options we need to give for this exploit by show options command. According to the required part, we need to give the R host and R port, which is our VPN IP and whatever the port you like. The set command allows you to configure the framework options and parameters for the current module that you are working with. So, let's set our options. After we set the options, we can type run command or exploit command. You can see we get into the system. The next task requires us to escalate our privilege on our target machine. Let's run this session in background by typing Ctrl plus E. Now, we back to Metasploit. The challenge wants us to convert our regular shell to Metaprotor shell. Naturally, there is a module for that. All we need to do is load it. So, let's search that module. We found that shell to Metaprotor module. Let's use this. While looking at the options, we see the session option. In this case, we need to tell the module that which session to bind to. So, we can find the active sessions by sessions. We can see our background session details. So, now we can set the session ID to this module like this. And then type run command. Now, we successfully converted our normal shell into Metaprotor shell. The next challenge after escalating our Metaprotor shell is to migrate it into another process. Let's run the ps command to find the active processes of this machine. Now, if we run the hashdom command, it won't work. Because, we didn't migrate the process yet. We see a list of all running processes on the target machine. I chose the target cmd.x. But you can choose whichever one suits you. But, just make sure the process owner is system. Now type migrate and the process ID of cmd. We have successfully migrated our process. But, were you curious how Metaprotor actually manages to inject itself into another running process? The answer is, Murderprotor does several syscalls to the Windows API to query the target process, snuggle itself into its virtual memory space, and kill the old process. I will leave a link in the description so that you can learn more about this migrate things. Now that we have complete control of the target machine, let's grab some loot. The task challenge wants us to grab all the password hashes on the machine. So let's let Metaprotor do the work. And we found the hashes. Now, let's copy the John's password hash and identify the hash type using hash identifier tool. We found that hash type is MD5. So, we can use this awesome online password cracking tool to crack this password. You can use hashcat tool also. See, we found the password for John. 
After that, the final step is to find the flags. We can use search command to find all flags. I put star notation here because we need to find all flags that are stored in this system. You can see we found those three flags locations. Let's grab those flags.